My name is Richard Seitz, and I am ECO's Automation Product Manager out of the Norfolk, Virginia office. Today, I'm going to be presenting part two of our Rockwell Survivor series that focuses on the software portal. I'm going to review some of the major changes that affect our customers and give an overview of the portal's features. Rockwell's release of their software portal has introduced major changes to their traditional software ordering process. Every software order through the portal is completed as a contract with terms affecting license type, maintenance terms, and support options. The traditional part numbers are now delivered as bundled part numbers reflecting the software product along with the type of license selected and the maintenance terms chosen as part of the contract. Many of the software selections in the portal are available as either perpetual or subscription. A perpetual license is delivered as a permanent license with renewable maintenance terms. Contract renewals will affect any maintenance and support terms, while the license stays intact and unaffected in a perpetual state. A subscription license is subject to expiration at the end of the contract. Renewals will include extension of the license period along with extension of the maintenance terms. Both options include software updates, access to the knowledge base, and phone support. Overall cost of ownership and corporate software policies can dictate the path to either a subscription or perpetual license contract. Here's a comparison of the traditional Studio 5000 standard part numbers to its new options in the software portal. There's no difference in functionality between the five new part numbers. They describe whether the license will be perpetual or subscription and outline the support level. With so many options available, it's helpful to have your options planned out before creating a quote. To help us clean up the software request process, we've created a customer template requesting some basic information to ensure we're suggesting the most suitable software option for our customers. Knowing things like the required revision and intended operating system helps us get ahead of any incompatibilities and lets us know if any legacy software components are needed. Legacy software has a separate part number and may need special consideration. The software portal is a new and constantly evolving tool with product options and functionality improvements added frequently. You can buy, download, and manage software and the associated contracts all from the portal's interfaces. To demonstrate navigating through the environment, I'm going to walk through the process of selecting and ordering a single install of Studio 5000 Pro. So here I am on Rockwell's software portal at commerce.rockwellautomation.com. I've logged into my account using my knowledge base password and I'm gonna scroll through and find Studio 5000 through the menu of software options. Once I find Studio 5000, I can click continue. And the screen now populates with the list of choices for Studio 5000. We've got light, got standard, we've got pro, along with legacy options and a few others um, that will help us depending on the version of software that we need. In this case, I'm just going to quote for the newest version, which is above 20.05, select professional edition. Now that I've made the selection, I have the option to choose between perpetual with maintenance or subscription. In this case, I want to choose a perpetual with maintenance option. And then scroll through the other selections to step number two, where I can customize the package and choose 24 seven support. You have option to add miscellaneous options. We also have some recommended products that could be part of the package. But in this case, I just need the Studio 5000 Professional Perpetual Edition. I'm going to click Add to Cart. I'll click Checkout. And this will take us to my cart for review. The first step in the review of the quote is the verification of our business shipping and billing details. Once we've made any necessary changes, we can click Next to review the contract details section.
And we have the option to extend our agreement term between one and five years. We also have the option to align our contract renewal with previous orders, which will result in a prorated cost adjustment to our new contract. We can select our billing terms and we can make sure to select our distributor. When we're finished reviewing, we can click next. Under final review, we can enter a PO if we have one available, and we can enter any promo codes or incentive dollars. We'll click the checkbox to accept the license agreement terms and hit generate quote. Once a quote has been generated, it needs to be assigned to someone in your organization who can review the quote and make sure that the contract details are correct. So we can select assign a quote owner, select an email address, and then assign the quote. We'll click yes. Now this quote has been assigned and an email will be sent uh, prompting review and acceptance of the contract details. The email sent to the quote owner contains a link to review the quote online, which will send the owner into the software portal for approval. Once submitted, a follow-up email is sent confirming the order and giving the option to opt out of automatic renewals. These renewals affect the maintenance terms of perpetual software and both the license and maintenance terms of a subscription contract. If you choose to opt out of automatic renewal, you still have the option to renew before the contract expires if you choose. Once a contract has gone active, links to the activation certificate and the software download website are available with the contract information. You can see here we've got access to the activation certificate with our serial number and product key. And here we've got access to the download website where we can download the appropriate version for our application. In addition to the download and activation information, we also have the ability to create users and assign licenses in the software portal. Bound licenses can be tracked to actual hardware IDs and any remaining installs can be easily managed. The software portal definitely affects the way we will all interact with Rockwell software. Quoting, purchasing, license management, and maintenance will all be affected, but as this new interface comes together, we'll all have one central mechanism to help us manage our growing needs for content delivery and license management. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to your questions. Great. Hey, Richard, I had a question come in. Okay. Uh, what about volume discounts? All right, so volume discounts. Can you see my website here? Yes. All right. So volume discounts uh, is a little bit different than previous bundled discounts. And I'll try to show an example. Under view distributed HMI. So what the volume discounts is, is um, it's a tiered discounting system based on the amount of, uh, or the quantity of licenses you're gonna order. So we do have a couple of bundles available in the um, USC distributed platform. But anytime there's a, an information button, we can see that things have volume discounts available. Um, so in this case, uh, from one to nine, we have no discount. From 10 to 24 units of a USC client, there's a 20% discount. Um, so you can see as the volume increases, uh, the discount increases. So this could actually push you into a different tier, depending on if you're looking at a project that may require um, 45 licenses, you may want to go ahead and order 50 because then at that point you jump from a 30 to a 40% discount and it could be cheaper to get to 50, especially if you have uh, expansion plans in mind. Great. We also had another one come in. What type of support is quote unquote self-support and how is that compared to 24 seven or nine to five? Um, so self-support would be you're not um, subscribing to any Rockwell support. Um, if you called in, you wouldn't have any help uh, from 
from the systems they have in place, eight by five would allow you to, which is the standard um, pricing for the options they have in the portal, you would have the option to call in and receive support as you would with a Tech Connect contract, for example, between eight and five. And 24 seven, there's an upcharge depending on the package um, to give you full round the clock support. Great. Another one just came in. How can you track down licenses? So license management um, is pretty interesting. And if you can see this uh, PowerPoint slide, um, I've prepared this previously, and we've got information about your contract and the address that the licenses are assigned to. If you see the left carrot there, you could actually open this up and view actual hardware IDs. So when you purchase licenses, you, you get a number of installs for that license. In this case, we've got Factory Talk VSE. There's four clients purchased. Um, four are actually bound. So someone had allocated an extra license, but only four of these can be used. We can track down those individual machine IDs by expanding the left carrot and see where these licenses are bound to. And these are actual uh, active licenses and contracts from current customers. Awesome. Another one came in. It looks like there's a little bit of a caveat that this might be just more so for larger companies. Um, but their question is, was the process that was just shown, was that used to generate the quote or to purchase? So and, that, that was a combination ahead. of both. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Go ahead and finish the question. Yeah, it's a little bit longer. So if it's the former, an engineer might do it. If it's the latter, would it would probably be a purchasing agent. So could you, you know, talk through what that a little bit? Um, so anyone can generate a quote, whether it is a purchasing agent or if it's an engineer. Um, just because you generate a quote does not mean that you actually are required to purchase. So we do understand that there are um, collaborations and teamwork involved with actually completing an order for, uh, for one of these software contracts. So typically we would at least want an engineer who would be uh, using or responsible for distributing the licenses to at least review the content. Um, they can assign once reviewed, they can assign that to an individual purchasing uh, representative from their company to send us a PO or go ahead and purchase the, the software. So it can go either way. Um, and there is some flexibility with the assignment of the quote uh, to end users. Hope that answers the question. Great, thank you. Also, just want to remind anybody, if uh, you want to raise your hand, you can. that would allow you to unmute yourself and we can talk directly with Richard here. Otherwise, at this time, I don't have a question in the queue. So I guess we'll give it just another minute or so, see if any come in. Sure. Yeah, there's lots of different stuff to do in the portal. Um, more and more options are added to the portal every day. Um, there is supposed to be an update in the next week or so. Um, that should make some of these options a little bit more user friendly. Um, I'm trying my best to show what I can through the portal without giving up too much customer information. Um, I've logged in here under our own account. Um, we've got some interesting things we can do for license management. So it's a little bit of a disruption and a big change for a lot of us, but um, I think management wise, it will be really good to keep the licenses in one place and to be able to assign users um, and manage, manage the content from this one, this one portal. I just had another question come in. Will this system track existing previous or pre, and or previously purchased licenses? I actually had that question come up this morning. And as of now, I don't know that there are any plans to do that. Um, but I think it would be extremely useful if that were to be incorporated. Great. All right, at this time, there's no more questions. So we'll give it another minute just to see if any others come in. Sure. So let me get back here, see if there's anything good I wanted to show in here.
Yeah, the contract changes are, are the whole concept of the contract and the bundled part numbers. Um, there are some guides that aren't completely available to everyone, but we do have ways to manage um, converting license, old license numbers to the new bundled part numbers. Everything includes maintenance with it now. So those part numbers uh, now include maintenance. So when people are submitting for bids or uh, getting new information about uh, a software package, the part numbers may look different. Or in most cases will look different. I had another question come into the queue. When you purchase support for a license, is it only for that license? And is that support the same as Tech Connect? So it is only for that license and it's different than Tech Connect, but it's similar because maintenance is tied to the contract. Um, and then it can potentially, once the maintenance expired, could be rolled into a Tech Connect. Maintenance does include very similar things to what a Tech Connect would offer. Let's see here. Um, so if you do, you know, order it, say uh, an eight by five, this is where uh, phone support is optional. If you don't, if you choose self-support in the uh, perpetual mode, then you will not receive phone support. All the subscription options um, will include at least eight by five and the option to upgrade to 24 seven. So you do have the knowledge base support, software updates and phone support, which are very similar to Tech Connect. Great, thank you. Right now that we do not have any other questions in the queue. So we'll wait just another minute or so, see if any come in. Yeah, these two uh, question marks here too, if you see in license, uh, license flexibility and intelligent activation. So there's uh, when you come up for renewal, you do have the option to upgrade um, your maintenance terms. So a perpetual, obviously, you wouldn't be upgrading at that point. But a subscription upon subscription renewal, you could upgrade the license type and the subscription terms at that point. Um, and then intelligent activation. So this is where we've got the visibility, as I showed earlier, um, into how many licenses are being used and where they're being used, um, and you can. When you're in the portal, you can view that content by mousing over any of these gray buttons uh, that pop up. Great. Uh, a question just came in, how do I access the recorded session? Uh, for all of those, we will be sending those who uh, joined today, as well as those who registered for the event in general, a link later today, if not tomorrow, uh, with access to this recording. That's good. That's one I didn't have to answer. Thanks, Adam. Yes, sir. All right, we don't have any more questions in the queue at this time. So I want to just say thank you to everyone who joined today. Uh, thank you, Richard, for putting this on. We will be sending out some follow up emails with the links uh, to the, the resources that you saw in this video today. So thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And we appreciate you guys for joining.